Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our 2022 webinar, Journey Towards 5D Beam. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Kimberly Lau, business consultant of Glodden. First of all, on behalf of Glodden team, we thank you for taking your time to be part of our event. We're excited to have you with us to witness how Cubicos 5D Beam empowers the construction firms to better manage their projects, especially during tender stage as well as construction stage. Your presence means a lot to us. Beam digitalization has now encompassed the entire AEC industry. When there are major shifts in the industry, the only way to benefit from them and continue to thrive is to stay agile and keep up with the pace of change. As technology develops further, Beam-based digital cost management platforms gives AEC players unprecedented levels of accuracy, productivity, and real-time collaboration. This year, we will be focusing on implementing 5D Beam on construction projects. We care about your thoughts and we want to hear your feedbacks. If you have any questions throughout the event, please feel free to engage with us by typing your questions in the Q&A panel. Our team will reply to your queries as soon as possible. Long in short, let us kickstart the event. We hope you enjoy the sharing from our keynote speakers. Hey everyone, welcome to our webinar. Our topic is 2022, Journey Towards 5D Beam. Before we get started, let us introduce our keynote speakers. First, we have Mr. Upo Shanta, Mr. Frank Chui, me, myself, Mr. Ang Chen Turn, and Mr. Samim Ahmad Laskar. Let us welcome Mr. Frank and Mr. Upo. Good day, everyone. Thanks for joining our webinar today. This is Frank Chui on behalf of Global Business Development Team. Today, I see a lot of friends from Dubai, India, Sri Lanka, Qatar, South Africa, and some friends from Australia. Welcome all of you. Glad to meet all of you here. The topic I want to share is 5D Beam and digital transformation. First of all, please give me seven minutes to introduce Gloden, the mother company of Cubicost. Some of you know us well, but I believe some may be the first time to hear about Glodon and Cubicost. We are a digital building platform service provider focusing on beam products and platforms for AEC markets. Up to now, we have around 9,000 employees with more than 80 global subsidiaries and branches. We have six IND centers, three in China, one in America, one in Finland, and one in Poland. We believe the strong R&D team can ensure that we have the capability to deliver the best technology for you. Up now, we have 190 granted patents on beam technology, and our products service more than 6 million projects all over the world. Here from the chart, you can see Glowing Business revolves around the whole building life cycle from design, tendering, to construction and the maintenance stage. Our key technologies include, but not limited to BIM, Building Information Modeling, SIM, City Information Modeling for Smart City Solutions, IoT, Internet of Things, Big Data Analysis, AI, Artificial Intelligence, Cloud Technology, etc. Digital Building is a platform that Glosen has released to promote the industrial transformation and upgrading through information technologies, including BIM, cloud computing, big data, IoT, mobile technology, and AI. Relying on the advanced series and method about a lean construction, it integrates personal processes, data, technology, and the business systems together to make the whole life cycle a digital building. The digital building is represented by new design, new construction, and new operation and maintenance. So digital building is what we believe it is now happening and the future for our construction industry. And the obvious advantage values that the digital building platform can bring to us, we think like the more income, higher speed, better quality, and less cost. Of course, there's also other benefits that we can explore by ourselves. Today, all sectors are talking about the digital transformation. 
no matter you are a big enterprise or small company. And we all know that digital transformation is inevitable for today's business. The construction industry is one of the largest industries in the world, but it is still one of the least digitized sectors. We are constantly being considered laggards when it comes to the technology adoption. Until today, some of us still insist on some old and very inefficient tools. So we can see the construction industry still has a long journey to digital transformation. What is digital transformation in your understanding? I think it is the integration of the digital technologies into all areas of our business. So it is fundamentally changing how you operate and deliver the values to the customers. Of course, it is also a culture change that requires our organizations to continually challenge the current status of the team, to start the experiment, and to get more comfortable with the shining things and with the failures. We live in an era where the technology is helping business make breakthroughs. And COVID-19 makes the digital transformation more imperious than before. We should open our arms for new technologies. The technology is for everybody. It moves business exponentially and it provides the solutions in terms of need. Let's talk about the digital building platform. It changed our enterprise management from the traditional IT to the DT, the data technology. So generating the data, taking the data, analyze the data to support our final decisions. The big data is taking our construction industries to a new higher level. But maybe, you know, we want to know how we can start the digital transformation. In my mind, I think we can divide it into three steps to ensure the safe and the practical evolution. The first of all, it should be the digitalization of the positions and the projects. So after that, we can upgrade to the enterprise level digital platform. And after accumulating enough data, then we can do the data analysis and management. And finally, the big data analysis can help us improve our lean management and support our top decision making. KBCost is an international leading 5D beam solution that empower your project tender and construction stage. It is the great tool for our quality service. And also it is an excellent platform for project quantity and cost management. In my mind, 5D beam is the easiest and the best part for the data generation as the start for your enterprise digital transformation. Later, you can learn more information on this from our technical manager. JSite is another solution from Gloden. It is for the smart project site management. It is very popular in China and the Europe market. On the, at this platform, all the beam modeling used for the smart project management are generated from KubeCost. And the digitalization is not only for the project modeling, but also for all the elements and activities at the project site. Like the people, the machine, the material, the technology, the method, the environmental monitoring. So all the data relevant should be pick, uh, picked up to, and uh, submit to the platform. Then after we can accumulate enough data, then we could have better project coordination and big data analysis, finally to support our top decision making. Here are some projects testimony with the adoption of global digital building platforms. You can see some high rise building and the airport projects.
That's the last part. I want to see, no matter we like it or not, the technology is changing the construction industry very fast. No one can stop the trend. Our past performance doesn't guarantee our future success. We should stay young for shiny things. We should stay young for new technologies. Time is a passage that can separate the adopters and those who won't. Future is not just for the young, but also for the young minds. So I want to see never be late to start or to learn. Never to see we are too busy to learn new things. So start your 5D beam journey. Maybe it is one small step for our quality service, but it is really a great giant step for our enterprise to stay top in the fire market competition. That's all for my part. Wish you all the best. Thank you. Good afternoon from Sri Lanka. Uh, today, the topic is uh, beam implementation for quantity surveys. Uh, I will talk uh, under uh, four sections about this topic. Uh, first, uh, I will talk about beam environment uh, in Sri Lanka. This is because I, will, I have to give you some background about the talk. And then I will talk about uh, how the 5D beam implementation uh, helping the Sri Lankan construction industry and the quantity survey practices in Sri Lanka. Thirdly, I will uh, uh, talk about how individual quantity surveys start the process and the project implementation process. And finally, I would like to conclude what are the skills uh, we need to work on for BIM enabled environment for quantity surveys. So to start from BIM uh, environment in Sri Lanka, I'll give you a little bit of background about the Sri Lankan construction industry uh, related to beam environment. Uh, first of all, there is no regulatory requirement uh, in Sri Lanka uh, or the initiative from regulators uh, to enable the environment in Sri Lanka. But we have found uh, recently there is a uh, younger professionals, uh, architects, um, engineers, and uh, especially quantity surveyors are very enthusiastic to implement BIM and work in BIM environment. Um, I must say less than uh, 10 companies uh, have capability to implement BIM um, as a project. Uh, and uh, out of that, um, only three to four companies um, can has a capability to implement BIM pro as a process. BIM awareness uh, is increasing, but um, it requires a lot of resources such as trainers, uh, software, uh, employers' willingness uh, of the professional companies uh, for BIM, which is lacking at the moment. Previous professionals uh, relatively uh, have more uh, BIM awareness due to uh, initiatives taken by uh, Institute of Quantity Surveyors Sri Lanka and the exposure of quantity surveyors to the global construction market. So architects and engineers issue 2D drawings and uh, QS professionals uh, use 2D drawings to complete, uh, complete their cost management services, including post contract services. Uh, one important distinction in Sri Lankan construction industry is uh, uh, mainly the Sri Lankan projects are on uh, traditional uh, procurement system, uh, remeasured type of contracts. Uh, and now we find uh, design and build implementation uh, is uh, gaining momentum in Sri Lanka. Moving on how the 5D beam implementation for quantity surveyors uh, helps the industry. Um, in the absence of front-end uh, players like architects and engineers providing 3D beam uh, model uh, and the documentation, um, the quantity surveyors uh, ability um, have been hampered uh, due to non-existence of uh, 5D beam software in the recent past. But recently, uh, 5D beam software uh, implemented in Sri Lanka and uh, software like Gloden Cubico software, uh, the ability of Gloden Cubico software to create a quantity surveying model uh, for project uh, from 2D drawings is commendable. And um, the, the, I see the 5D beam, mod, uh, 5D 
Kondi uh, Service of Tia's work in uh, working in Sri Lanka has uh, always uh, the capability of uh, making uh, 3D BIM models take uh, directly to their uh, their cost model and take off quantities. But uh, the countries like Sri Lanka, where the BIM is lacking, uh, the BIM process is lacking, where the 2D drawings are uh, the main source of uh, documentation. Then the ability of uh, Cubico software to generate 3D model from 2D drawing is um, very much important and it increases the BIM awareness among other professionals while uh, the Condi service are engaged in uh, 3D models. Um, other professionals also now get to know about uh, the process of BIM uh, with this introduction. The improves the application of uh, value for money concept. Uh, through this uh, uh, QS uh, BIM implementation, like uh, post management services always have to do uh, value engineering proposals, evaluate value engineering proposals and uh, uh, give the clients the best value for money. We are the, now with the model, models, uh, QS uh, software models, uh, where we can, uh, the quantity service can real time give the, uh, uh, assist the, uh, value engineering proposals and give the clients uh, a benefit of uh, choosing alternatives. Also, in, it improves the post-contract post management functions uh, like subcontracting, payment applications, variations, change management, and final accounts also. Use of the same model throughout the pre-contract and the post-contract improves uh, uh, trackable uh, documentation, which helps the final uh, presentation of contractual claims and uh, post claims to the during the later stage because uh, data uh, is already embedded uh, in the this trackable documentation. Therefore, in recent introduction of uh, Gordon Cubico software to Ma Sri Lankan market has acted as a catalyst uh, for beam awareness in Sri Lanka. So, moving on, how individual QS should start the beam process uh, in the QS services. The journey to become a BIM enabled quantity serving professional starts uh, from the learning 5D BIM software such as uh, Cubicost uh, Software Suite. Uh, it will give the quantity surveyor the skill of developing uh, the 3D model you know, for the project. Uh, data handling and pricing uh, using TBQ platform uh, and uh, use of uh, revision and segmentation functions uh, during the post contract project implementation to process the change management and interim valuation and final accounts. If we talk about implementation of the project, traditionally, uh, it starts from inception uh, to the final accounts. Of course, uh, there are um, new concepts of uh, end of life cycle also, but we uh, in Sri Lanka, we talked uh, only about uh, from uh, inception to final accounts. The QSS um, journey for a project uh, quantity surveying services also starts from uh, inception to final accounts in the similar fashion. During the initial stage, uh, as everybody knows, uh, QS uh, quantity surveyor had to prepare a cost plan. Uh, based on budget for the budget using parameter volume, uh, volumetric data. At this stage, uh, the Cubico software enables quantity survey can create the 3D model uh, with the scheme design. And uh, some of the details you might have to as a quantity survey from your QBS background, you have to use some of the details and generate from those model, you, if you generate the quantities and it you will be able to prepare your cost plan. Of course, you have to have a data um, through the analysis, uh, cost analysis uh, data has to be there for pricing the uh, your model. After the scheme design, of course, the project won't stop. What will happen is project uh, always, uh, we have changes in the design, adding more details, uh, receiving more and more uh, update. And uh, definitely we have to, do the update in the cost plan number one we have proposed. So if we use the same model, uh, which was used for the cost plan one number one and uh, work on the details and with the revision function, uh, those more uh, the the QS can track most of the changes, uh, maybe area changes, uh, maybe increasing the number of columns. Uh, everything uh, is. Uh, can track uh, by the quantity surveyor and he can justify his uh, second revision uh, easily 
because sometimes we find it is really difficult to identify the uh, changes done at the initial stages by the architects and engineers. And if we have this track uh, uh, from the original design to this design easily identified by the model, uh, is then we can justify our public serving uh, post plan, the revision easily. That is, I think, one of the major advantages uh, we are facing, uh, we are using at the moment to justify our um, cost plan number one to cost plan number two, what are the improvements and number three, so on. During the detailed design stage, the QS can update the same cost model, uh, adding further details, finishes, door and window schedules, and prepare quantity schedules uh, using TAC and uh, TRB. Uh, while BOQ can be done using TBQ uh, software uh, and the pricing and the e-tendering also possible with the TBQ cloud. So the, finally, uh, once you tender and once you get the final um, award, uh, of course, you can discuss with the contractor, discuss with the project managers and share the, uh, your completed cost model, uh, QS model to with the uh, contractor to uh, update uh, throughout the process of project uh, post-contract uh, management. But of course, one thing to note uh, that uh, the engineer issued drawings are the uh, legal base uh, contractual requirement in even in Sri Lanka uh, for contractual matters, uh, not the quantity service model, even though both parties agreed for um, uh, management of the post-contract works. So that's uh, everybody had to mindful. At the post-contract stage, uh, the contractor's QAs and the consultant QAs can use the agreed model for valuation of variations, um, subcontract payments, interim valuation, and finally the final account uh, using the same updated model. This improves the efficiency of quantity serving services as there is no duplication of measurements because if, throughout the process, every time we use uh, at least one, uh, two, to, two to three types of measurements uh, for material ordering, subcontract payments. But if you are using the same model with the segmentation functions and the um, revision functions, uh, we use the same, that allows the quantity surveyors to use the same model uh, and uh, complete the post-contract duties. So quantity serving professionals and com companies uh, should um, adjust their cost databases uh, and how we, they uh, really use those cost databases, how they collect the uh, cost uh, analysis data uh, in, in this BIM environment. Finally, I'd like to touch a little bit on the future BIM enabled quantity service skills uh, required. Um, creating your own model for costing is not that easy task without knowing the construction technology. Especially in the case of uh, drawings uh, uh, without required details, so without information, then uh, the quantity surveys had to um, do some initiative to uh, in, uh, do, do some initiative around the construction technology to create their own model. Therefore, all quantity surveys should be aware uh, that construction te technology is one of the mandatory basic skills for being, being enabled environment like Sri Lanka. Once you create own model or your project, uh, the project won't stop, uh, it starts changing. These changes are very fast and requires adjustment faster than the way we are working today. So the skill of working in 3D environment needs to be excelled by the future QSs uh, where they need more and more practice working with the software. I think training and uh, working more and more with the detailed uh, soft, uh, software skills is necessary for uh, working efficiently on the 3D model. Uh, also, I find uh, limited customization in BIM software is um, as per the project needs are becoming more and more common. Uh, this is because the unique nature of construction industry uh, and also the ever enhancement of uh, software and hardware capabilities. The future QAs should be able to do customization of BIM softwares. Even Cubicost uh, will come to that. And it is likely, like it is like today, we customize Excel with uh, macros. Uh, we customize. Future.
3D B modeling is also one of the areas uh, QA should also be excel. And as um, like um, other 3D beam software uh, uh, is necessary and is one of the necessity uh, for quantity surveyors to have the skills. So QS need always to do changes to the model uh, to suit our cost model. So therefore, this also improves the skill of navigational and understanding the uh, 3D models by the quantity surveyors. Also, I find uh, QS professionals and directors of the QS companies and the construction companies should understand the whole process we are working today normally are going to change. The way we used to work around is changing. In this environment, we need to understand the workflows, uh, data flows, adjust the work environment to suit the BIM enabled uh, data flow and the workflows. The, the data flow also we have to uh, readjust and move to the BIM enabled environment. Finally, embracing 5D BIM by quantity surveyors will improve the efficiency uh, in quantity surveying services as well as construction industry from inception to final account. Once improve the efficiency, that benefit will flow to the stakeholders, especially the employees, um, employers, and the construction industry, all the stakeholders. So finally, I wish all and everyone uh, success in managing the change to BIM enabled working environment. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mr. Upo and Mr. Frank. Uh, those were some interesting topics that you have shared. Now, without further ado, let us continue with our webinar. So 5D Beam Digital Cost Management is about three main things. First is about intelligence, second is about visualization, and third is about interconnection. From 2D until 3D, to 4D and finally up to 5D, every stage has their own descriptions. For example, 2D is mainly just based on documentation, 3D is more on three-dimensional model, and then 4D is planning and 5D is about cost and estimation. So here in 5D Beam, we will introduce on how our software can do costing and estimation. For our software, we have mainly these few products. So this series is called Cubicost, and the few products that we have here, they are called TAS, TRB, TME, TBQ, and also eTender. So on the left, you can see there are three software here. So TS, TRB, and TME, they are the software to take off architectural and structure, TRB for rebar, TME for mechanical and engineering and plumbing. TBQ and e-tender is for costing, uh, for example, like preparing the bill of quantities and also e-tender. So our software can help you in both pre-contract and also post-contract stages. For example, in pre-contract, we have pre-design, we have costing, tendering, each of those situation, we have prepared this slide to show you how our software can be implemented to prepare all of these. So no matter you're in the pre-contract or post-contract stages, you can utilize all of the software. Now TS is the leader of the 5D beam quantity takeoff era, and its main calculation business is architectural and structure. So for the past 10 years, it is widely praised for its built-in local calculation rules, efficient modeling, and integration of quantity and model. So my partner, Samim, will take over from here. So I'm going to pass it to you, Samim. Good, hello everyone. Thank you so much, Ang, for such a good start with a great introduction. So let me start with the objective. A quick rundown of the topics for today's webinar. Let's get started with 5D Beam. So who is using 5D Beam? That's the first topic for today. Then we're gonna look at implementation of 5D Beam in tendering stages as well as in construction stage. Uh, finally, we'll conclude with your opportunity of getting involved and becoming a digital hero in construction. So to start with, um, let's look at an overview of construction digitalization. So who is using 5D Beam? 
Right, this slide shows a comparison between different ways of working using design and quantity takeoff, quantity surveying software in general. And then it provides an analogy to understand where we stand. Of course, with the evolution of beam, changes in various tasks are quite inevitable. Um, so we compare the traditional pen and paper method of working with 2D software. The analogy is quite normal. Um, it's just a normal cordless telephone versus a slide phone where you have, you know, obviously uh, it's kind of better if not the best. But then from, from a point, we started developing the idea of digitalization in, in, in tools and process, uh, in particular in construction industry. So with construction 4.0 industrial revolution, which is the current industrial revolution, um, we can see a widespread adoption of beam in projects. And this is like a smartphone, which is not just limited to making calls, but in many other day-to-day -day applications, we can use the smartphone. I'm, I'm, I'm sure that none of us in the room would disagree on the fact that we have a better life using smartphone versus uh, a phone with buttons in it. Um, it's also based on the fact that the traditional method of um, you know, working versus the 2D based software, um, which is in you know, AutoCAD for design or any other 2D software, take of software in the market, it is a, a big difference, um, which we can realize from the fact that now we are using AutoCAD and um, many 2D takeoff tools um, for quantity surveying. But then comes the beam based software, which on one hand for design, we are using Revit. And then we have cubic cost for quantity surveying, um, all the quantity takeoff and cost estimation, um, all interconnected platform. So here comes the analogy becomes a smartphone, which is not just limited to a particular function, but you can do literally many other activities in an interconnected platform. And we will dive in more in details um, as we move along with regards to the functionalities and how it actually helps us. Okay, so here's a list of clients of Kibikos. To name a few, we got consultants like Acom, Arcades, Bright Levitt Bucknell, um, Shapoji, contractors like Samsung CNT, Shimizu, China State Construction, Obayashi. Then we have developers such as Godridge, Surbrana Jarurong, um, Sina Group, and many more. Um, this also shows our presence in pretty much every corner of the world. Okay, so this slide uh, shows a testimony from one of our users, a lot more engineering consultants in Oman. This is a 2 million OMR project in Oman, where the client used our system for quantity takeoff and cost estimation throughout the project. And this is their um, comments on the entire process. And we will, as we move along, we'll actually get to see how the software is um, going to save us a lot of time, how efficient it is, and how um, you know, accurately we can do the quantity takeoff and all of these different benefits that we will be able to see. Um, so this is one of the case studies. Okay. Well, here's another one. So we have another consultant, ARQS. Um, in this project, they have used Kibikov system as well. Um, so the value of the project is 200 million rupees. And here's the endorsement that we can see from the user. With that, we move to the second topic for today. So implement 5D beam in tender stage. Um, you know, in general, we all seem to be reluctant up to a certain limit when it comes to technology. And um, we tend to find plenty of reasons for that. Um, but when push comes to show, we rush for changes. So it's a time where we should identify the areas where disruption is needed and um, save time for a better outcome. So, Let's move on. Okay, so over here, we can see that um, this is kind of an overview of all the takeoff tools and how it works. Um, from the file formats to the model, it's inherently intuitive. And um, so when we have a CAD drawing or a vector PDF, the software identifies all the elements from the drawing itself and automatically builds up the beam model. When we have a hard copy or scan PDF file drawing, 
Um, then all we need to do is just define and trace the elements to generate a beam model out of it. And then if we have a beam model already, a Revit or an IFC file, you know, it could be a federator or a single model. All we need to do is just import the file, check the element properties, and then we can straight away proceed to the quantities just by one click to, uh, to do the calculation. And then different types of quantity reports can be produced out of the software. So the software automatically applies the rules in it um, in order to generate the quantity reports out of it. Again, we are living in the industry when it comes to collaboration and compatibility with different well-known file formats. Autodesk being our R&D partner paving the way for us to make sure our products is user-friendly and compatible. Um, so we are certified by Building Smart, which is an international standardization body for OpenBeam. And so we support popular file formats like Revit, uh, Beam Model, IFC Beam Model, which stands for Industrial Foundation Class. Um, that's from Building Smart, as I mentioned. To be very honest, you know, once you have a Beam Model with information fitted in it, it's going to help you throughout the construction life cycle. Um, using a virtual model during the design stage, we, we can verify design at very, very early stage of the project, which can save us a lot of time and expense by speeding up the process of design changes. And obviously, in every project, we tend to have a lot of design changes. Um, what we noticed and realized is that the lack of cooperation and difficulty of sharing information, um, these are the major reasons for the communication issues during an entire project life cycle. So our system makes sure that um, in a Beam environment, the mostly commonly used Beam files are compatible, which is like a Revit model by making sure that there is seamless cooperation with the upstream Beam model, for instance, the design team. So you can 100% import the, a Revit file with no data loss whatsoever, and then you can proceed with the lifecycle beam management throughout the life cycle of the project, as you can see from the design to tendering to construction and then handover and operation stage. So here we're going to find out the simple steps involved in doing the modeling and QS modeling, and then how to, how to do the quantification and then produce BOQ reports out of it. So, to get the quantity take and cost estimation done in the most explicit way, we introduce you Revit model quantity take -off. So what we realize is that we don't need to deal with uh, a, you know, non-proprietary file formats like IFC, where we need to ascertain which building elements are you know, mapped for an export. Um, so using a Revit design model, as you can see on the screen, our system provides you with not only the takeoff of of all the elements, but also helps in live connect quantities with the BOQ. So the Revit model import is quite simple. All you need to do is just go to the Beam model and um, you know browse through the local directory and find out the model and then settle up the floor levels. Just make sure that the, the elements are getting imported with their respective properties. And then we just choose a location to place the model in. Um, just in case, you know, if you have different models, so you can place them at different locations based on the master plan. And then we can proceed with having a look at uh, different settings like grade settings. If you'd like to change this, um, you know, for instance, the concrete grade of a particular element, whether it's substructure or superstructure elements, you can do that. And then you can proceed with different other setups there. Um, when it comes to dealing with the errors in a particular model, and this is where everything gets interesting because, uh, you know, being a Revit modeler, you may have different kind of errors with regards to overlapping. So in that case, the software actually determines where are those errors and allows you to trim out the extra areas. So from the model check result, we can see that there are different errors with regards to overlapping or extensions. So the software has a powerful function called auto process by which um, it trims out the extra layer. And again, it asks you permission if you'd like to do that or not. You can set different setups there. And then we have the quantities right here after doing the calculation. Now, once we have the quantities ready with us, 
then it's about live linking these quantities with our BOQ. So the BOQ is um, inside of a software called TBQ. So TBQ is a tender estimation um, and pricing software. Um, out here in TBQ, you can have a built up BOQ already, or you can you know, import a B, uh, BOQ whether it's in Excel or PDF, a scan PDF. And then all you need to do is because both the software, takeoff software and the distribution software are connected together, all you need to do is you just feed the quantity information to the respective bill item. Um, so you can have a reflection of the actual BOQ from the TBQ to the task software, as we can see on the screen. And then we can just drag and drop the quantities from the model to the BOQ. And as soon as we do that, there is a function for check-in and uh, check-out, which would basically send these information to our estimation software. And if you'd like to apply any factor to any of these quantities to increase um, you know, the quantity, you can do that. And there's a powerful function, which is reversely check. Um, we saw that before as well. From the BOQ itself, you'll be able to get to see where exactly the quantities are coming from the model. So now that we have the quantities feeded into the BOQ, now if we switch to our estimation software, TBQ, and get to see uh, the quantities over there with the details, we can see that who, as a QS, attached that quantity to that bill item and at what time with every kind of details out there. And also it shows with the sign that the, the, the quantities came from task software, which is takeoff architecture and structure. We can also do manual quick calculations um, and you know, feed into different bill items, just in case you know if there are some bill items which we have to do some manual calculations, we can quickly do that. We can apply formulas, um, different functions, just like what we do in Excel. And then we can do some sort of you know, manual typing as well if you'd like to add up some quantities in, um, in a particular bill item. So these all functions are available and it's quite flexible when it comes to edits and you know, modifications. And then we get to the actual BOQ preview where we get to see that all these quantities that we have just uh, feeded in are actually getting reflected into the actual report. And we can provide, we can put in a logo on the top of it if we are consultant. Um, and then we can start providing the different details into the header and footer, uh, the page numberings and all of this kind of different settings are there. And then finally, when we have the BOQ ready with us, if we are a contractor, we feed in the, the rate and the amount is already there. And then we can do the printing directly from here. So now we have the PDF BOQ with all the details in it. That's from the Glorden Cubicost, the whole system of how we connect the quantities with the BOQ and live link both of them. So because the model is connected with the BOQ, what happens is that when we make any changes in the model, that gets reflected into the BOQ automatically. So that's automated. All right, so 3D modeling from scan PDF or JPEG file. So over here, we can see that inside of our Cubicost task software, we can quickly create a project and select our rules of measurements. And just by pressing OK, we have created a, a new project. Now, in this particular slide that we're looking at, uh, different file formats such as PDF or scan picture copy of your drawing, how do you deal with those files like JPEG or PDF? So first of all, if you look at the measurement settings and measurement rules, we get to see that different rules are being um, already inbuilt in the software, which are coming from the method of measurement that we have chosen uh, while initiating the project. Over here on uh, flow settings, we can basically set up different you know, levels of a particular building, and different grade settings that we looked up before. Now, if you proceed with um, any kind of file formats that I mentioned that it could be a picture file, a picture drawing. So if we have imported a JPEG drawing, what we tend to do is we go ahead with scaling the drawing first, because obviously for the most part, it's not scaled. And the, the scaling process is quite simple. It's just the same as any other CAD software in the, um, in the market. So if you, if you proceed with the correct scale, then the drawing is uh, pretty much set for building up the beam model and proceeding with the calculation. So next step, we are gonna go ahead with one particular element, let's say if we are just concentrating on column. So if we do column, then 
Um, in this particular scenario, because we have a picture, not really a good quality picture, but bad quality picture, let's say the drawing. So what we tend to do is we just create a particular type of column, that's a C1 in here, and we start placing them in their respective position on the drawing. And you know there are different functions to actually snap that particular location as well. You can snap that particular point where the, the, the column needs to be placed. Um, just to save time, we actually placed uh, other columns over here. So if you proceed with the next element as beam, we can do the same. Uh, we just create a beam, uh, provide some informations like its width, height, and um, then we can directly start placing the beam in its position. So it's um, as simple as just dragging that particular point from the beam from one point to another point, and it just got placed. So all you need to do is just create those types of beams and then place it in their respective position. By the way, while we are doing the modeling, in the background, the software is making sure that all the calculations are getting applied. So if you press calculate, um, the, the calculation result would pop up, uh, it would, uh, would be available with us. So to save time, we also did this lab quite um, quickly. And over here, we can see that all the elements of beam, elements of I mean, a slab and columns are in place. So what we're gonna do is next, we're gonna run the quick copy floors. So by doing so, is we can copy those two different floors. And what happens with that function is that it saves up a lot of time because for the most part, you know, the structural elements are more or less same on different floors, um, except for the size changes. If you'd like to do that, you can then switch to the next floor and make changes. That's um, quite um, user friendly and easier. So in this particular slide, we're looking at 3D modeling from a CAD and vector PDF drawing. So a CAD drawing uh, and a vector PDF, which is basically a CAD drawing converted to PDF. So to proceed with automated quantity takeoff, we will have a quick look at how the system works. So over here, we can see that on our, in a working space, we don't have any drawing yet. So we're gonna import some drawings um, from our browse directory, and then we have these floor plans here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna let the software um, do a auto identification of elements from the 2D drawing and build up the beam model for us. So we just split it, the part of the drawing that we would like to use for the first uh, beam modeling. Uh, we can split out the drawings as many times as we want, depending on which part of the drawing that we are using or depending on the flows that we are working at. And then the function of auto identifications are right here. So all we need to do is just perform three simple steps. We pick the sideline of the particular element that we are identifying. So here, for instance, we are identifying the axis grid. So we just picked up the axis grid and the level of axis grid and by auto identification function, here our axis grid in place. So by three simple step, we can generate any of the elements that we want. For instance, here, if we just proceed with one of the structural elements like column identification. So we're gonna have a look at how the software automatically identify the 2D lines and build up the 3D model for us and do the calculations for us as well. So over here, we can see that there are different functions, but three particular functions that we'll be using just like before what we did. So you're gonna go ahead and um, you know select the column, and then we proceed with the first step, which is picking up the sideline of column. Uh, then we proceed with the next step, which is picking up the tags or levels of those columns, and then proceed to the third step, which is just um, auto-identify. Now, what happened along with this process is that the software identified the 2D lines and built up the 3D model from there. You know, so these are the columns in place as we can see. So from the 2D drawing, whether it's CAD drawing or it's a uh, vector PDF drawing, the software would identify those 2D lines and build up the 3D model for us for any kind of elements. Um, so now that we have our column, if we proceed to our, um, you know, a couple of more elements like beam and slab is just the same three simple steps. 
And for slab, you know, you can select, you have the option of selecting um, a particular type of slab that you would like to place, or you can make changes uh, with respect to the names or their thicknesses. So over here, we can see that these are the thicknesses that um, can be changed or, you know, we can proceed with. So we have the column, we have the beam, we have the slab in place at the moment. All right. So that's pretty much of the three structural elements that we just looked at. Um, now, if we proceed to the wall for an architectural element, um, we can again perform the three simple steps, picking up the sideline of whether it's masonry wall or a concrete wall, you can then pick it up. So we are pre uh, proceeding with masonry wall sideline. We picked up the, uh, we don't have a level for that, but we picked up the doors and windows for walls to make sure that the soft panels were the openings. And then we proceeded with auto identification. And look what happened. We have the wall in place now. So this is the 3D view of our wall. Um, now, if you go for some openings on the wall, uh, for instance, the door, um, this software, again, pulls in information from an Excel file, from a PDF file, um, a schedule of doors and windows, or from the CAD drawing itself, if you have a schedule inside of the CAD drawing. So here we just picked up um, a schedule of doors and windows from the CAD drawing, and the software is pulling in all these informations, uh, providing the headings that we have selected or it automatically identified. And now we can see the identification is done. Just in two simple steps, we have all the, all the doors and windows listed with their respective size, with their properties in it from the schedule. Now, all we need to do is just identify the levels of those doors and windows. So the software knows their position from our previous step. Um, now, if you proceed with auto identification, the software identifies those openings of doors and windows, place them in their position with their respective sizes. Really, really powerful tool. And then if we go ahead with a structural elements like lintel, um, there is a quite intelligent function of auto identification, which automatically places the lintels in their respective position. And let's have a look at that. So um, we proceed with uh, some properties like width and uh, you know, length and the extension that you want on each side of the lintel. And then all we need to do is just select the entire drawing and right click for confirmation for that particular set of condition. And the software would place that particular lintel that we created on the top of all the openings out there. So it is a matter of just selecting the drawing and pressing OK. So now when it comes to complex items, um, such as staircase or finishes of a particular building, how do we deal with that? So in this slide, we will be able to have a quick um, look at how we deal with staircases in general. And then we will also have a look at how to do the finishes of a particular building. You know, if we just create a staircase, um, just the way that we did before for any other element, um, there are multiple functions available with you. So we will, we will just proceed with the basic functions, which are like, you know, you providing information related to the riser and thread and um, for the you know, thickness of lending and width of lending. And then the software knows how the model should look like. All you need to do is just trace the positions of the steps uh, by simple clicks and the software is gonna place the steps in their respective position. But what's interesting to look at is the software actually creates the lending automatically. The shape of the lending and how far it should cover, that depends on the properties that you have provided before. But the mid lending and the floor lending are being created by the software. So it's, it's really, really intelligent function there. And once you're done with that, you can actually edit that particular staircase if you'd like to have some sort of shape on the corner and if you'd like to you know, change uh, some of these elements uh, shape, like if you'd like to provide some more railings as an, as an example. So we just select, okay, we would like to have railings on all the sides. Uh, if you'd like to get rid of the beams or you know, change the size of beams, all these informations are available inside of that function. Now, if we proceed with the finishes, we go to our different rooms, and there is this particular function in the software, which we have just selected the room. Um, what the software does is that it takes care of every kind of finishes that should be applied to a particular room. So now 
all you need to do is just for a particular room, you assign the wall finishes, you assign the scarting, you assign the floor finishes, the ceiling, and it, it takes care of uh, all the edges in the corner of, let's say, the, the beam or column, uh, which is coming along with wall. Um, if that's a wall opening, the software would, um, you know, consider that and deduct that area in, in terms of uh, the wall finishes. Now, in this particular case, we're going to import a schedule of finishes. If you have it in Excel, if you have it in CAD or in PDF, we can deal with every kind of format. So now you can go ahead and just select that particular file of schedule of uh, finishes. Um, now we are using here an Excel file. And as you can see that on the top, we have the heading. So we tend to get rid of some of those. You, know, you can delete the row, you can delete the column if they are not useful. And then you just have to make sure that all the finishes are in place with respect to their heading. So the software knows exactly which finishes are getting imported. Now, if you press identify, the software identifies all the finishes with their respective rooms. So you can see that different rooms got imported and with their rooms, on the right side, we can see that the attached finishes are also there. So these all attached finishes got imported from the Excel schedule of finishes that we have. Now it's a matter of just clicking on different rooms um, to apply those finishes. Just in one click, the software is going to place all of these finishes for a particular room in that particular room. So let's have a look. So we just click here, and that is it. It's been applied there. Now, if we go to the next room, um, we just switch to the next room, uh, which is our made room. Um, we then go to made room, place it there. We have then made toilet. So we're going to go ahead and do that as well. Now, if we turn it into 3D view, what we to see and check is the placement of those finishes. And you can see that the wall finishes considered all the sides and edges and openings. And then you have the starting right there. And then you have the, the flow finishes. Now, let's have a look at an on enclosed area. The previous function was applicable for the enclosed area, which is enclosed by a wall. But if you have an enclosed area, you know, and you try to apply that finishes, you can see that it goes beyond the line that you want. Let's say we just want to apply finishes for this particular room. So there is a really, really useful tool, which is um, separation line. And what it does is that it creates an in invisible boundary, uh, which doesn't have any quantity in it, um, but it may show that the areas are separated now. So we can apply a particular set of, or just one type of finishes in one particular area, and then we can apply another set of um, finishes on another side. As you can see, you know, I just applied for this particular area, the wet kitchen, and you can see that this is uh, the result. But for this area, we're gonna go ahead and, uh, place another type of finishes as an example. So this is how we can actually separate our, our finishes. We can place different finishes at different positions. Um, and to add to that, you know, more so we can actually deal with different shapes and sizes. You know, we can split those items and create different other shapes as well. Okay, so now let's have a look at the collaboration when it comes to modeling. Now, we're going to have a look at how to copy entities to different areas and different floors. If you'd like to you know, copy some of these elements to different locations, providing that two buildings are similar, how are we going to do that? Or you know, if you would like to just place it in the opposite direction, how do we deal with all of these rotate functions and copy functions and stuff like that um, in 3D model, by the way? So you can directly you know, copy and paste the elements, all of them, um, to another part. And this is how we copy the entities of this particular model. And then if you would like to, you know, copy it into another place also, you can just, it's all about just, um, you know, copy and paste. And then you have ground floor, quite a, it looks quite a huge building, you know, two buildings um, right next to each other of the same shape, just by copying these elements from one place to another. Now what we're going to do is we're going to copy all the elements of this particular floor of ground floor to different other floors. So in this particular example, we are just considering that these uh, floors are typical floors. So what the software is doing is basically copying all the elements that we have modeled so far in ground floor 
to all other floors that we have. Uh, but as I mentioned before, you know, we can switch to different other floors and make changes as, um, as it requires. Um, if we just start on the whole building, just to have a 3D view of it, you can see that all these works can be done very quickly if you have typical floors, but even if you have, um, you know, um, different other shapes or sizes, you can make changes by switching different floors. All right, so we looked at the modeling part. Now let's proceed with the quantification of different elements and how do we extract the quantities and produce some reports out of it. So before we move to the quantities and reports, you know, we have to proceed with calculations. So we're going to do the calculations very quickly. How it works is that it basically um, follows the same principle as I mentioned before, depending on the measurement settings, the software is going to calculate and apply those rules with regards to you know, which uh, quantity supersedes, which quantities are in, you know, when it comes to deductions, for instance, as an example. So over here, if you just press calculate, the software would calculate whether you'd like to do the calculation for a floor or the whole building, you can get it done. And then we have the quantity view option, which is view quantity by category. And over here, we can see that it's a complete set of customizable catalogs available on the left side. Uh, which allows us to categorize quantities with different conditions, different filter options, division, et cetera. You know, selecting different um, conditions or calculations that we want. And then we can directly export it into Excel as we can see the function is available there. Um, then when it comes to looking through all of these different quantities, you know, as an example, um, in a particular case, if you did the calculation, then you're going through the quantities and it's kind of a little bit trickier to understand which quantity is exactly from where. So there is a really, really useful tool available with us, which is reversely check function. What it does is that you just select a quantity and just press reversely check and it takes you back to the model, shows you exactly from where that particular quantity came from. Let's say we selected another column quantity here, press reversely check and there it is. And then we have another function to check the calculation result or how did the calculation took place inside of the software that is view expression function by which it really breaks it down to the you know calculation of length area volume with various details and their um, you know numerical values so you can actually get to see every detail of the calculation that happened inside of the software and if you would like to make any kind of changes obviously you are always free to do that by going back to the measurement settings and, and change the settings. Now, if you select a wall, what's interesting to notice here is that it not only gives you the, um, you know, breakdown of the calculation, but also it allows you to have a visual, um, you know, confirmation of the calculation that is happening. Well, it's kind of useful for documentation or kind of visual presentation purposes. Um, at this point, you can see that this is the whole uh, quantity of wall, there's a deduction for doors, deductions for windows, there are deductions for lintels as well. So by all of these deductions, uh, the software arrived at a, at, a, at a point where it calculated quantities for just this shape. And this is what the quantities that we just saw inside of our report. All right, so this slide in particular looks at a complete interconnected quantity takeoff and cost estimation platform. So that's provided by TB cost. And so to get an overview of how the complete system works, uh, we can see on the left side, three takeoff tools such as TAS, which stands for takeoff architecture and structure. Then we have the TRB, which is for rebar, which is what we're gonna look at now. And then we have the TME, which is for MEP, which we will look at um, in a while. And these, these tools basically do the quantification um, using the beam model, as we saw, and then it produces the quantities. And what we tend to do is we connect both the estimation and takeoff software together in order to produce the beam costing part, um, which is again connected to the e-tender platform, um, the tendering evaluation, um, you know, receiving tenders, um, doing comparison, um, and finalizing bid and all of these different kind of activities can be done in the e-tender platform, which is connected with the VOQ of the TBQ. Okay, so let's proceed with TRB, which stands for takeoff for rebar. So over here, 
we will be looking at a 3D modeling, which can be shared between TAS and TRB. The model that we have just built up in TAS, we're going to use the same model in TRB, in other words. So on the screen, we are looking at TAS software. We have built up this BIM model. We can export the model. And there is a native format within KiwiCost, which is called Kiwit format, by which the software you know, allows you to share model within the suite of software of KiwiCost, you know, uh, TAS or TRB or TME. And now that we have the model ready, now we open up the TRB software, which is taken for Reba, as I mentioned. And we're going to just import that particular cubic model inside of our TRB software. All right, so here's the result. We have the beam model with all the different details that we built up in TAS. We have the slab, we have the beam and column. Now let's proceed with column. All we need to do is just select uh, the, the type of column, which let's see one as an example here. Um, you can simply manually put in the you know, main bar information, the, the steer ups information, um, and if there are links, all of these different bar informations can be directly input in the properties and just run the calculation and get the result. And you can see the visual representation of the rebar and how they are basically arranged for a particular element. So we did that for one column. Um, you know, in many cases you have same type of rebar information for different columns. So there is a function for synchronization as well. You can synchronize the same information over um, to different other, um, other columns as well. Now, if you proceed with Beam, uh, what we tend to do is we can, you know, there are different approaches available in, within the software, including the manual one. But then we have a really, really short uh, method, which is the, the Beam rebar information schedule. If we have that schedule, then we import that particular schedule and the software would identify all this information. In other words, it will pull in those informations from the schedule. Um, the schedule could be in CAD format or in Excel format, as I mentioned uh, before. And then over here, you can select which column represents which rebar. So we're looking at the top bar, we're looking at the bottom bar, the sidebars and the steer ups and, um, and the links. So once that's been done, what we can do is we can just proceed with identification just by simply clicking on generate a beam schedule. The software is gonna identify all these informations and it will build up a beam schedule within the software. So now we can see the details of different um, beam rebars with regards to their you know, calculations as well on the top. And then this whole setup can be synchronized to our beam model. Now, as soon as we press the synchronization button, as you can see by pressing on generate beam, it's gonna feed in all the Reba information inside of our um, beams. Now, all we need to do is just run the calculation and just have a look at 3D view. We can see the placement of rebars, the sidebars, the top bar and bottom bar with their steer ups and you know, their, the, the conditions of steer ups placement um, having um, in their position. And you can see in the text view, there are different details and there are uh, rebar informations also with their respective shape and their band length and everything in details, which is quite useful for bar bending schedules that we can produce also as a report from here. And then you have the details of calculation, you know, the, the, the calculation formulas which have been applied there. And if we proceed to the report, as I mentioned just now, you have the rebar schedule here, um, which works pretty much well for us to you know, proceed, proceed with material, um, ordering materials or, you know, future activities. Um, various details are available with regards to the cutting length, bending length and everything within that uh, bar bending schedule or the rebar schedule. Um, if we proceed with different, um, you know, classification summary, we can get to see that for different elements like wall, lintel, beam, slab, column, quantities which have been calculated by the software for different elements. We can see that the rebar informations are um, set quite well with um, different rebar sizes and the summary, um, summary calculated result as well. So that's the total that we can see over there and you can export it into Excel uh, format as well. So that's pretty much of the rebar information that we can obtain, uh, produce different reports 
proceed with the calculation, providing that we have the beam model, or we can generate a beam model inside of the software as well. Now, if we look at the calculation rules, because this is like the question that we all may have in our head, like how the calculations are happening, how do we get to see them? So you can see that there are different calculation rules which are being set up already inside of the software, and it's quite flexible with regards to changes. And this is coming from the region-based, you know, the standards that you're using. Um, so you can see that the green color information that we see here are editable. So for each individual uh, bending or, you know, lapping or hook length, um, stirrups, whatever the conditions that you would like to feed in there um, with regards to calculation, then you can make changes from there itself. So if we just go up, as an example to this particular element as in plan view of end of our bottom of wall rebar, we can then change that value to a particular, let's say a value of 100, a fixed value instead of applying a particular formula. So once you make the changes, you can see that it turned into a yellow um, color window, which means that we made changes there. And you can probably export it or import a new calculation formula for your future use as well. So that's quite useful when it comes to you know, using a similar calculation rules for different, different projects. With that, I'm gonna conclude my part of presentation. The reason of starting with multiple interconnected tools is to draw your attention um, to how collaborative the whole system is and to contemplate that. As a matter of fact, we can utilize all these functions of 3D uh, beam modeling or 2D tools available inside of the software uh, for our quantity takeoff and cost estimation in a common platform. So now for the MEP takeoff and other very much interesting topics, I would like to pass it over to Eng. So thank you everyone. Eng, the floor is yours. Thank you, Sami. That was a wonderful presentation. From here on, I'm going to take over and we will continue to talk about TME. So again, TME is the software to take out the quantities for mechanical and engineering. So there are a few traits that we have in the software. First one is ACMV. It includes all the ducting, grills, fuses, and piping. And for electrical, of course, we have the lighting, we have switch and socket, we have tray, trunking, et cetera. And the last one is plumbing and sanitary. Currently in TMEC, we have these three traits. In the future, probably by the end of this year, we will include other services such as firefighting. So how do we model MAP component in our software? So right here, we are going to show you how the software works. The first thing we need to do is to select the major that we need to do. For example, the plumbing sanitary, electrical, or ECMB. Once the project has loaded, you will enter this interface. And then the next thing that we need to do is to go to our floor settings. Here we can add different areas or zones that we have according to our drawing or project. And then we can add as many floors as we want and change the floor height. Once we have done the settings here, we can proceed to import our drawings. So here I'm going to use some CAD drawings and this will be based on ACMB. So for this particular drawing, we might have some trouble viewing all of the items that we want to see because Usually in MEP drawing, it is very complicated or very confusing to see all of the items. For example, we have so many walls, columns, all so many items here. So what we can do in this software is that we can hide or unhide any cat lines that we want to see or do not want to see. So I'm going to show you how. First, we can go and select by color or by layer. Then we select the items that we want to see. For example, the items here and the labels and all of the information as well. Then we can just proceed and click display cat entity. And now the drawing will only show the layer that we have selected. 
once we have done this step, we can proceed to identify our items. So let's try with um, our equipment first. So for example, from here, we can try to identify our equipment by using this function. We can first pick the device. We select the legend of the equipment. Do not miss out any information. Then once we have confirmed the legend, we can pick the system text as well so that the software knows which text is for the equipment. Then with just a few clicks, you can see that the software has already identified a few dozen of the equipment. Then we just click auto identify, and then the software has finished, identify all of the equipment with a similar legend on this drawing. So maybe some of us, we want to double check if we have identified everything correctly. In our software, we have a function called brightness. We can adjust the brightness at the bottom here. Then from here, it is very easy for us to double check if the items have been identified clearly or not. So as you can see from here, all of these are the equipment that we have identified so far. Okay, so let's try the next one. Let's try to identify some air grills. So I'm going to switch back the brightness of the drawing. And from here, you can see we have different sizes of air grill. One is a bigger air grill, another is with a smaller size. And I'm going to go to my air grill element and I'm going to create the attribute editor for both of them. So let's take, for instance, this is AG1 and AG2 and I'm going to change different colors for each of them. And now I'm going to proceed to click device and then same thing, I just pick the legend. Then I can just pick on identify and you can see from here, the software has identified there are 39 aggro in this drawing. So I'm going to do the same for the other aggro. Again, with just a few clicks, we have finish identifying both the sizes of this air grill. Now, the next thing that we need to identify here should be air duct. So let's click on air duct, and there are a few ways to identify the air ducts here. First one is by using a double line. Double line is fairly straightforward. We just need to select the labels and both of the lines, then we can get the air ducts. And you can see there are also two red lines here. These are the supports which hold all of the air ducts together on top of the ceiling. Okay, so from here, you can also see there is an orange item right here. I'm going to show you in 3D. The software has automatically generated this fitting because first we have identified the equipment, correct? So once the software has detected that we have an item on top, it will automatically generate the vertical air duct here to connect them together. The software is quite intelligent. Now, next I'm going to show you on how to connect these two air ducts together. We have a function here called air duct fitting. So we just select all of the air duct and it will create the fittings here. Now let's try another function. And the other function is called duct system identify. This will allow us to identify the whole system in one go. So for example, I select the label here and the both lines, and here we can choose which system is this air duct. Once I have chosen the air duct system, then I just click OK. And as long as this air duct is connected, all of the air ducts here will be identified together. So as you can see from here, all of these are identified. To finish with the fittings, again, we're going to use the function again, just proceed. And here you can see all of the fittings have been generated. Now let's try to do some piping. So 
Um, we do understand that there are cases where some pipings are very complicated. Here, first we are going to show you the simple ones. If you have piping lines here, you just need to click on the lines of your drawings and it will generate the piping. And the second method is by using the line function. The line function is a bit more uh, flexible, I would say. So let's say, for example, I'm going to draw the piping from one point to another. And let's assume that from this point onwards, the piping is going to go to a different elevation. So here we are going to type in 0 0.5 and it is going to go up by one meter. So to the other point. And then maybe from this point onwards, we are going to have a drop in elevation. Okay. And maybe from here onwards, we might have a slanted pipe. So we can just tick on the slanted pipe. We can also change the elevation again. And once we have finished the piping, you can view it in 3D again. So we can see we, we can also produce complicated design such as these. Now, on to the next part. Once we have finished our modeling, the next part is about calculation. So once we have clicked on calculate, the software will calculate all of the model that we have created so far. And under this view quantity by category, will show all of the quantities that we have. So let's say, for example, this is for the cables, uh, how long is the wiring, and uh, what is the specification of the wire, and which floor are they at, etc. So let's try to view others as well. We can go back to our ACMV. You can see all of the name, floors, and quantities. So again, we're going to change back to aggro as well. You can basically you can see all of the quantities here for everything that you have created so far. If you want to export the quantities, you can just click on export to Excel and then it will be exported to Excel. Now, the next thing that I want to show you is about how to check our quantities. Let's say if your manager asks you, how do you get this quantity? You can just double click on the quantities here and it will directly bring you to the location of those quantities or entities. So as you can see from here, I'm going to just click one by one and it will bring us to the location. The next part is about uh, region. In, in some cases, we might need to uh, separate the quantities between different regions. So here we can use the define region function and then we can just use line or rectangular to draw the area and then we can rename whether uh, this is a uh, room number one, let's say, and then maybe we have a second room, then we can just draw the area again. So basically what this does, it will help us to separate the quantities. Then we just calculate the model again, and we can go back to our report. And from here, we are going to customize or change what we want to view. So since we have switched on the region, you can see which quantities are under room one, room two, and those non regions are the quantities that are not included in any region yet. So that concludes for TME. The next one that we are going to talk about will be for TBQ and E tender. So, what is TBQ? TBQ is mainly about how consultants can prepare view of quantities with our software, and then they can send the soft copy to the contractors to do um, electronic tenders. From here, contractors can prepare all of their unit prices in the price library provided in our software. Then once they have finished their tender submission, they can send them back to the consultants. And then from here, consultants can use e-tender to do e evaluation. So from here, we will show you how TBQ works. Basically from here, we can create our own project first. Let's say you are the consultants. 
once you have created your project, you can create your own TBQ project here. For example, you can add any bills, any items or sub items that you want. Then you can key in all of your descriptions, your unit quantities, etc. Once you have created all of these, you can send the files to the contractors and the contractors can use our software to identify whether is it by form of PDF or even Excel. We are going to try to identify a PDF copy. So let's say all of the pages we have here. And once you click identify, the software will identify everything and it will convert all of this information into the software. For example, you can check all of the descriptions, all of the unit or even rate. Here you can click to double check. So as you can see from here, all of these are properly identified. So the next thing that we can show is how to link the quantity in our TS project into TBQ. So we are going to open back our TS project. We can click on the BQ tab here and click link TBQ project. Then we just need to log into our account. We then you can open the project that you have created in TBQ. <clears throat> so currently the quantities here are locked. We just need to close our TBQ first and we can come back our software and then we can do the quantity linking. So let's say I'm going to close this project. Okay, then we can come back to our model here and we can open the report and do the quantity linking. So from here, we just need to click on view quantity by category. Then we can just click on those quantities and we can just click and drag and it will be connected to our TBQ. So you can just repeat for all of the quantities that you have into the TBQ directly. And when, once you have done with all of the quantity linking, then we can go back to our TBQ software. And from here, you can see that the quantities have been linked. You can also see that there is a very small icon there stating that this is TAS, meaning it is the quantities link from TAS model. Once we have done all of the quantity linking, you can either key in the prices manually, but of course we are going to utilize a better um, function that we have in the software, which is called the view up unit rates. So now we are, we are going to change to a different tab. And here, this is where we prepare and store our price library. So let's say we are going to create some unit rate here first. We are going to create a subcategory and we can create uh, based on the, whether the material, the labor or equipment, anything that we want. So we can just click on the heading, the subheading here to create all of the unit paid. Then you can key in all of your trade codes, your description, unit, etc. So let's say that your company has already prepared an Excel sheet containing all of those information, we can also directly help you to import those information into the software. So right here, I'm going to import an Excel. So this, this Excel sheet contains uh, many unit rates, including the labor, material, and even equipment. Once you have identified all of these information, you can double check from here all of the quantities, uh, all of the unit rates have been transferred into the software. So from here, we can continue to do our costing. We can just select the rate code, which we have prepared in the view of unit rates. Then all of the net rate, all of those will come in automatically. So let's say that for our bills, we have a lot of items, right? We have balls, columns, uh, beams, etc. 
we can actually make the process a lot easier by using the filter function. Let's say we are going to search for wall. So once, once you search for wall, the build will filter all of the wall elements. So you just need to filter that. Then we can proceed to key in the rate code. And then we can just drag this rate code to all of your wall. So you can directly do uh, costing directly here, efficiently and accurately. Now, so let's say that you have finished, let's say as a consultant, you have done your BQ, then you can just publish your BQ, then you can generate this tender document, save your password, and then you can send this to your contractor. Right, so once the contractor has received the TBQ file, they can start to do the e-tendering by using TBQ. Once they have opened it, you can see that the contractors actually cannot change any description here. They can only key in the prices or they can also utilize all of the price library or unit rates that they have from the current project or even uh, previous projects and utilize it in the costing stage. So for example, if they want to reuse any of the unit rates from previous project, they can just uh, copy and then they can just reuse it. So you can also click and drag, you can double click. Uh, there are many ways to do the costing here actually. So let's say you have finished, you just click on uh, generate tender submission, you key in all of the file information here and also key in the password. Then once you are done, uh, you can just save the file and you can, you can send it back to the consultant. Then the consultant can proceed with the evaluation. What if you are a contractor, but you do not have a TBQ? So if that is the case, you can actually also use our website here, which is called eTender. Then you can just import the file you have received from the consultant and do the costing here. Okay, so you can just import the file. Then you can do the pricing here, like how you do it in TBQ. But the main difference here is that you cannot use any price library, uh, you cannot you, you cannot use any past projects, unit rates, you cannot use the filter as well. So uh, basically, I would still recommend you to have TBQ as it will improve the overall efficiency. So again, once you have finished the tender, you can just generate your tender submission here, key in all of the information and also the password. Then from here onwards, the consultants can then import all of the tender submission and do evaluation. From here, consultants can try to uh, compare all of the tender submissions that they have received. So from here, you can see different comparisons here, company one and two, which prices are higher or lower. And we can also further check uh, which specific elements or even bills, whether the prices are higher or lower. So everything is shown clearly, even with a graph here, to show you uh, how many percentage of each elements or bills have taken up. So that is basically for TBQ. So the next one we are going to talk about is how to implement 5D Beam in construction stage. So from here, you can see we have uh, different stages in construction. And during construction stage, there are some common pain points or I would say some challenges. For example, we will face time constraint, uh, error prone, or even rep repetitive works. So next, we're going to see how our software can help all of, all of us to, to reduce all of these issues. Now this function here is called segmentation. Segmentation here allows us to choose between construction zone 
we have subcontracting, progress claim, and even custom. Here, we are going to choose progress claim. And under the progress claim here, we can choose the calculation scope. Then we can just select the area of our completed model. Then we can just proceed to uh, set the associated segmentation. For example, these columns are in between the areas, so we can set whether they are part or not part of the segmentation. Then we can continue to click Calculate. Once the calculation has been completed, we can just go to our report or just view from this area and check on the quantities. So please keep in mind the quantities that we have selected here is, is solely based on the areas or the segmentation that we have uh, selected. So from here, we have selected the progress claim. You can see it is uh, categorized under progress claim number one. You can also see all of the summary of the quantities based on this segmentation. Now, the next part is about set associated segmentation optimization. This basically allows us to clearly set the quantities, whether we just want form work or we just want concrete and based on different types of progress claim. So let us have a look on how it is done. Firstly, we can the same, we can do the same, choose our progress claim. And now we are going to choose just a few calculation scope, and then we can import the drawing which we have highlighted after we have visited our construction site. Okay, so this is a PDF drawing that we have highlighted based on our construction site. Then once we have import the drawing, we can switch off all of the non-related entities. So only the columns are left. Then we can select the areas based on the highlighted drawing. Then from here, we are going to choose both formwork and concrete for this progress claim one. And for the next area, for the columns, maybe we can just choose only for formwork. Okay, so then we can continue the same steps for beam and also slab. Choose the areas that you want, choose the quantities that you want to set. Then you can calculate again and then view the quantities. So from here, you can try to view the expression or the quantities. Once you have clicked on the area, you can see here, the selected slab only contains the quantities which we have set with the segmentation. So here we are going to create another progress claim, but this one is progress claim number two and we will include the rest of the quantities. And now we are going to view the quantities again. And here you can clearly see the quantities for progress claim number one, progress claim number two, and whether they are just for concrete or form work or even both. Then we, here we will try to view from report so as you can see from here, we also can see the progress claim number one and two. So the next one will be about define work done. So define work done is basically for uh, vertical elements such as wall or even columns, because sometimes when we have a very large project, for example, a very tall column, Maybe you, are, maybe you are going to cast the concrete two times. The first progress claim based on that will be maybe 50%, and then the second progress claim will be the remaining 50% and so on. We can also utilize the segmentation to define the work done as well. So let us have a look. First, we can also create the progress claim first, and then we select the calculation scope. So from here, we will only select, let's say for columns and walls. And we will select the columns that we want. And this one will be under progress claim uh, number, number one or two. We can choose from here and we can choose how many percent it has been done. So progress claim is 100% and we will choose this one as 30%. And then we will just repeat 
the steps until we have done for all of the columns. And then we can proceed with progress claim number two. And once we click on the define work done, we can choose to, to have the remaining percentage. For example, the first is 30%, so the remaining is 70%. If we try to enter uh, a value that is exceeding the 100%, it will give us an error. So we just need to complete all of these, then we can view our quantities. And from here, you can clearly see our 3D modeling and how the, how the defined quantities are done. So let's try to view the quantities right here. This column right here is claim 100% in progress claim number one. And then this column right here is claim 30% in progress claim number one and the remaining in progress claim number two. Now, let's have a look at check segmentation. Check segmentation allows us to, um, to, to get an overall picture or save the screenshot to whoever we want to send it to as a proof uh, for when we are trying to apply for the progress claim. So for se check segmentation, you can choose all of the progress claim here and it will show the model in 3D, uh, separate the colors accordingly, and then we can further save the screenshot as high definition JPEG format. So we can do it like this. Then I can just save it. And then we can further send the file to uh, our manager or client or whoever. Now, the next function will be about revision. Uh, we do understand that in construction stage, there are a lot of um, variation order, or we call it revision. So whenever you receive new drawings, you will need to find out where are those changes. So those are very hectic. So in our software, how do we solve this problem? So from here, we have before drawing or and also after drawing. So from here, we have before and after drawing. And right now we are going to compare both of these drawings to, to find out where are the changes. So the software will do this automatically for us. Here you can see we have green, red, and gray color items. Basically, red stands for deleted items, green for added items, and gray for unchanged items. Once we know where are those changes, we can tell the software, okay, we are going to add a revision, and then we are just going to calculate the model once. And we are going to change or model the, our, our project based on the revision drawing. So let's say that these objects are to be deleted. And then we are going to add those elements that are from the new drawing. So let's say we're going to add the beam right here. And we are also going to add the slabs. Then we are going to add the slabs here as well. And once we have done the revision uh, model, we are going to tell the software, okay, we are done with the revision. Then we can try to calculate the model again. So from here, we can view the change quantity and it will clearly show us uh, before revision, after re revision, and also what are the total changes. So we can clearly see the differences from here. So next, we can also try to check individual quantities by just clicking or selecting those items. Then it will show us whether they are from revision number one or whether they are 
uh, or whether they are from the original model. Here we can also try to search on where are the changes for all of the entities, let's say for V1. So we can easily check all of the changes that has been done. Next is about QB Cost Cloud. For the past, I think around two years, since the pandemic has started, a lot of people have started to work from home. Cubicost Cloud serves as a purpose for us to upload all of our projects into the cloud platform in order for us to share all of these information, whether it's to our clients, manager, or our colleagues. So basically what you can see here is like how we can view in the PAS software. You can, you can either view by different zone, different floors, or you can even view by different elements. Then we can also re rotate the model, uh, 3D model like we did in TAS. And the next part is about the tools at the bottom here. We can view the model section. This will be very useful when you are at the construction site. And we can also click on individual entities and check for the attribute editor or maybe the quantities as well. So following, we can also view the quantity and, and also the expression, the volume, the area of form work, et cetera. Of course, we can also double check on the quantity report for each and every element. So the next part is about how we can utilize some of the other tools in Cubicos Cloud. So in Cubicos Cloud, we have a tool for us to quickly measure the distance between one location to another. For example, this wall, how long it is. And then we can also leave a comment. Let's say uh, I'm going to select this wall and I'm going to put an arrow and I'm going to leave a comment. So let's say, please check. Then you just click on OK. And the comment will be saved. So anyone who have access to this Cubicos Cloud file, they can open it and they can view all of the changes or the remarks immediately. So we are going to leave another comment on this section. Then whoever has access, we can just click on those comments and it will open up the screenshot and we can view where are those uh, changes or remarks. So that is basically for QB Cost Cloud. So on to the final part. The final part is about be a digital construction hero. Here is a comparison of the work efficiency uh, between using the manual way and by using Cubicast. Uh, we can actually see that the comparison here is almost four times faster than using the manual method. Here we can, we can see the time to check quantities and also the accuracy of quantities uh, by using Cubicast. The improvement or efficiency is significantly um, larger, I would say. Here are some of the project management benefits for all of the software. So for the beam quantity takeoff, the data are all traceable. We have better data storage, no paper are required. And of course, we can also link all of those information and avoid inconsistency and omission. For costing, for TBQ and eTender, all of the data accumulation is properly stored. We have a library management. We have only one platform for the data management. And of course, we do not require any paper. And the, the consistency is, is there. So the, fourth, the top five reasons to choose Cubicast. First, from what we have seen so far, it has improved our working efficiency by 60 to 70%. And it has high tech capacity and reputation. It increases your chances to win tenders. Third, it will be your professional internal collaboration and management platform. 
The fourth is to make the team happier and to have a feeling of achievement. Five is to have easier communication with the world largest BeamQS customer base and so on. Here are some of the typical projects that we have from our existing clients. Uh, you can see that no matter how big or different shapes or unique the building is, we can set up or create all of these in 3D. So we can see that the efficiency improvement stated by our clients uh, is up to 60 or even 70 something percent. Why not join us in this 5D beam journey to, to have not just intelligence, but also visualizations and also interconnection. Thank you everyone for joining our session. 